I hope you've enjoyed uh, today's conference. First of all, I would like to thank our strategic partners for the conference, Ernst & Young and Hayes, our corporate partners, BA Systems, Barclays, JLL and Rico. This event just would not have been possible without their phenomenal support. So big thank you to all the people from those companies. Let me just, in the next three and a half hours, summarize the key points uh, from, it, it's actually been a, been a great day. We heard from John Cridland charting the CBI journey and delivering prosperity for Britain and challenging business and government to continue with the mission. Prime Minister David Cameron looked back on five years of enterprise and dynamism of our economy, outlining the reform priorities for a more competitive Europe, which works for countries both in and out of the Eurozone. And we even had an intervention from a couple of students who were looking forward to our session on disruptors, but they just got the program a bit early. We also had on Taoiseach uh, Andy Kenny from Ireland, uh, describing as our friend and closest neighbour, saying that why Ireland's recovery is good news for Britain, saying that the voice of business needs to be heard in the European debate. Evan Davis took us through a 360 degree view of creative disruption from tomorrow's disruptors, today's disruptors, and those already being disrupted. Highlighting the importance of that discussion of trust, technology, innovation, and investment. The deputy team principal of Williams F1, Claire Williams, I did a fantastic job here of getting us excited about engineering, of what firms can do to excite young people about STEM subject, and also about how they diversified into energy efficient technologies and beyond the core Formula One business. Dave Lewis from Tesco, a pretty busy guy, came and talked about the challenges of the supermarket sector, of retail, highlighting not only those challenges, but the contribution that the sector makes in so many ways to society. And he also brought out a couple of those issues which of course are more difficult for the CBI. It's always tough to get into debate about the national living wage because, of course, we want everybody to have a great life in the UK. But Dave was just setting out, there are complexities in these sort of uh, legislation regulations, and we need to understand the unintended consequences of what can be, in principle, a well-intended idea. He also talked about, uh, about the apprenticeship things, two areas where I think the CBI team have done a fantastic job in walking the tightrope of being advocates of the need for change, but recognizing the consequences on business and the time that we need to deal with things. Uh, the toughest time I had this afternoon was that debate on education. I've never found it so difficult to keep my mouth shut for so long. I felt tremendous energy in the room, and that is the great thing about education. Everybody in the UK has an opinion on the subject that they spent a little bit of time in school. There was a lot of very, very important stuff said in that debate this afternoon. But I would say on uh, Nikki Morgan's question about world class for all. I felt a bit uncomfortable with the response because I visit schools every week in my role in Teach First. And there are, without question, world class principals doing a world class job of trying to transform some of the toughest schools in the country. I was in one last week in Poplar, a Swanley school, Brenda Landers doing a fantastic job where 75% of the pupils are on free school meals, destined because of their postcode to be in poverty for the rest of their lives, unless somebody like her and a team of brilliant teachers change it. And that is happening all around the country. So I think we need to be very clear that whilst there's a lot of challenges in education, there are brilliant teachers, brilliant principals, right across the school system, many of them going into schools that you would not be prepared to go into yourself to work in. And for those, principles and leaders, we should be incredibly grateful. But that's not why I'm meant to be up here at the moment. Now, I would like to thank all of the speakers today. I think it's been a fantastic day. Uh, to John and all the team at the CBI, I'm so proud of you. I'm really proud to be associated with this great, great organization. They put a huge amount of effort into all this. You wouldn't believe the detail that, that they go into, the thought about your security, about your safety, about the agenda and of getting speakers along. So to all, all the team, press, events, policy folk, membership team, you are the stars of the voice of British industry, and we all deserve 
uh, to say a huge thank you to all of you. But we do. That's for you. Uh, we do, of course, to our members need feedback. There are forms on today's conference. But I would say that uh, the management team at the CBI do depend crucially on your feedback. We're only as good a voice of business as our members are in sharing their views. So to all of you here, a huge thank you for your time and attention today. Uh, as you heard earlier this morning, though, uh, it is the 50th anniversary of the CBI, and it seems right that we mark it in some way. But particularly today, uh, as you heard from Dave Lewis, two-thirds of that history has been covered by a young fellow who came in 33 years ago as a little policy guy in the back rooms of wherever the CBI was at the time. In fact, it wasn't even the CBI to come in and, uh, and develop a career serving this country, serving this country brilliantly. So I'd like to invite John Cridland up on stage, if I might. I'm not finished. This man has been the voice of business. He has got people thinking about the middle stand, about the mid-sized business sector. He's brought passion into education. In my short time in the role of president, I've learned four P words that are really important. The first is policy and getting it right, which for a very diverse membership is immensely challenging and so difficult for us as member companies to understand what it takes to try and make sense of the voice of 190,000 different organizations. It is about being pithy. I come from Dublin. It takes me an hour and a half to introduce myself. John can summarize a key policy in one sentence better than any person I've ever come across. But he is also a world-class expert on punctuation. It's only John that could help me understand the difference between in with reform or in with reform. So where you put the comma can be incredibly important. But uh, he is a person of tremendous, tremendous passion. And John, we're incredibly grateful. A little later, we're going to, uh, to celebrate with some soft drink, I hope. But maybe just a few words from you. Thank you. Well, I had my chance, colleagues, to talk this morning. So I won't delay you from that drink much longer. I was very <laughs> taken by the question from our colleague from Pittards, what can we do in primary schools? I was in a primary school in Leytonston called a couple of weeks ago. I had to explain what I did for a living. I thought I'd be cute. I said to the five-year-olds, I'm a character from Thomas the Tank Engine. Who am I? And they went through a whole series of trains from Thomas to Gordon, and I said, no. I'm the fat controller. <laughs> and one five-year-old girl said, no, you're not. You haven't got a top hat. So I think the next CBI Director General should definitely have. This has been a whale of a time the last five years. The last 33 years have been fun. It enabled me to do the thing that I'm most proud of in anything I've done, which was being a founding commissioner of the Low Pay Commission, and in 1999, enabling a million low-paid workers to get a 25% pay rise without any of them losing their jobs. It doesn't get much better than that in business, making a contribution to society. I only ever Paul wanted to do one job in life. I realized that very early on as a CBI graduate. I wanted my five years leading the CBI. It's the greatest privilege of my life, other than having a family. I've enjoyed every minute of it, and I wanted to thank all of you for the support which have enabled me and the CBI team to make a difference for you and for the country. Thank you very much, and goodbye. Thank you.